Welcome back. This is part six of the Mogul Piston Machining Series. Uh, today we'll be machining the oil groove for the wrist pin, uh, facing the uh, head of the piston, and then also putting the taper feature on the head of the piston. So let's get going. Back on the uh, bridge port for the oil groove uh, feature. Uh, this is what oils the wrist pin uh, bosses and uh, bushings that we made so a very important feature just going to get it kind of centered up here on the rotary table and then we'll be ready to start machining using a couple stops and a tape measure for a rough alignment uh, 12 inch table 6 inch piston should be uh, 3 inches all the way around for spacing that'll get us close uh, and then we'll use a dial indicator to go ahead and dial it in but uh, just uh, getting it close at this point and then we'll get the uh, final clamping uh, system put on. Uh, I'm really pleased with uh, the clamping arrangement that I decided on and uh, we'll get to that in just a second. Here we are roughed in on centering. Uh, I'm just going to use these stops to kind of hold it in place so it doesn't uh, move around on me. Um, and then uh, I'm going to be using this metal bar. It's a inch and a quarter solid bar with uh, 9 16 holes drilled in it. Um, then I'll use some uh, all thread to tie it down to some uh, T-nuts in the table. Um, decided on this uh, method for holding the piston. Um, I think it'll be real stable and uh, hold the piston real well. And uh, uh, I was going to put just a flat bar uh, across the end of the piston, but uh, um, I like this one better. It, it uh, is a little more captive of the piston. Uh, I don't think it'll want to move around or anything. Uh, we're just going to be hand rotating the, the uh, rotary table, but uh, um, it's going to be, uh, needs to be pretty r rigid uh, because I don't want to uh, have that carbide end mill that I'm going to be using uh, chatter or anything. It can damage uh, the the end mill and then it'll also not make a very good finish so uh, we'll get this tied down and then uh, get to machining using some shoulder nuts to uh, tie it all down um, and we'll uh, get to uh, final positioning using a magnetic base dial indicator to uh, get indicated on uh, true zero uh, on the uh, rotary table. Round and round we go. I'm um, going to try to get it within a thousandth of an inch. Probably wouldn't have to. The tape measure probably would have been good enough, but uh, anytime you can practice being precise, uh, it's really good to do. Getting it dialed in here, um, getting pretty close, but uh, got a problem. Um, these uh, all thread uh, pieces are in the way. Uh, I can't index around through them. I don't know why I put them both on there, but I did. So I'll leave uh, the one in and um, have the other one out so I can roll it around uh, most of the 360 degree motion and uh, just keep uh, dialing it in. Uh, should be uh, getting close to machining here shortly. And there we are, all dialed in. Only took about 30 minutes to get uh, dialed into zero on the rotary table. Well, here we go. Um, got the rotary table bolted down at 90 degrees to the Bridgeport table, and I'm just hand feeding around. I've got a 3 8 uh, ball nose carbide end mill uh, checking for vibration in the um, piston there to make sure the work isn't moving or vibrating I don't want it, any chatter it can damage that carbide end mill and make a poor finish but uh, uh, it seems to be holding very well uh, you can see this oil groove feature in the piston half that's laying on the bottom of the table there it's not a real high precise uh, feature but um, just a very necessary one and uh, we'll just uh, get this feature done and move on to the next thing. Well 
Well, from the video clip, it sounds like there's a lot of chatter, but there really isn't. That piston just acts like a big speaker for any sort of mechanical uh, vibration or anything. It just really amplifies it. So uh, getting a very good finish. I'm going to roll back and do the other side now. Machining the back half of the uh, oil groove. Uh, it seems to be going really well. No chatter. Uh, my fixture is holding up real well. Um, as with any procedure, the uh, uh, setup and prep is 90% uh, of the time and then the actual work uh, doesn't take very long. So uh, we get this knocked out and move on to the next thing. Moving on to milling the oil pockets. Uh, there's a pocket on the bottom of each side of the groove uh, that collects the oil that makes it down the groove, guides it into the hole that goes into the bushing. Um, if those pockets weren't there, then very little of the oil would make it into the bushing. So it's a very uh, necessary feature, but it doesn't require a lot of precision or anything, just as long as there's kind of a pocket there. So I'll just mill that in, and then uh, we'll be moving on to the next step. And there we are, all done with the oil groove feature and done with the bridge port for now. Um, we'll be uh, back on it uh, a little later for some uh, reaming of the bushings. But for now, uh, we're done with the bridge port and we'll be moving over to the lathe. Chucked up and dialed in on the lathe and machining the uh, face of the piston. The piston is just a little bit long, so we're going to be machining that down. Uh, let's give a listen to the cut. piston is about three-eighths of an inch too long um, and that's by design. I cast uh, intentionally oversized for uh, plenty of machine uh, room so that uh, I can get into very homogeneous material but I've uh, got about three-eighths of an inch here to take off and I'm only taking 25 thousandths pass at a time um, just because um, I'm unsupported out on this end but uh, here's a little different view from the side uh, the lathe is turning at uh, 210 RPM. Uh, the camera just doesn't uh, alias correctly for showing that motion. But uh, just be a lot of machining uh, here, and uh, we'll get all that done off camera, and then we'll come back and be ready to do the taper. Here's a picture of my setup for machining the taper on the head of the piston. Uh, i got to apologize for this section. I didn't have my good camera with me, so I had to take everything with my phone. So I um, apologize uh, for the quality and content of this section. Uh, but the taper is the last feature, and um, it allows the piston head to travel up further in the cylinder than what is machined and that uh, effectively increases the compression ratio of the whole engine. So it's one feature of the moguls that they had. And there it is, one uh, eight horse mogul piston machined from rough casting. Um, wow, this was a major project on top of the restoration project itself. Um, I easily have a hundred hours in this piston, but um, can't go to Walmart and buy one, so you gotta make one. Um, I think it turned out really well. Um, 
in the next video we're going to be reaming the uh, bushings for the wrist pin and I will do a walk around of the piston and talk about each feature and kind of grade each feature and then give myself an overall grade on the uh, whole um, uh, piston project so uh, stay tuned for that and thanks for watching this video thanks for uh, uh, being along on this journey and uh, if you like what we're doing like and subscribe it really helps the channel out and um, leave a comment I do like to hear all the comments and uh, read all the comments so um, uh, do that as well and uh, we'll see you in the next video